Hello, Mary Mead. So I want to review a book. The book I want to review is this one. The Devil's Dozen, 13 Craft Rights of the Old One by Gemma Gary. Now, basically what this is, is her take on traditional English witchcraft. And a specific uh, tradition of traditional English witchcraft that bases itself, um, basically, you can say it has been some uh, cross influencing here. Because witches have long, there have been several horned gods that various pagans and witches have worked with. And then the Christian influence has referred to this as the devil, and then has, has sort of then been accepted. So you can say this is, um, in a way, a reclamation of the idea of a witch that I had during the witch hunts. So it's basically they, in this, these rites do pray to a Deity, they sometimes refer to the old one, sometimes as a bukka, and sometimes as the devil. And uh, it is actually quite interesting because you see this cross influence. So it's there, and that is quite interesting. You also really like that she uh, writes in the beginning of the book that the rights she has written herself but they are inspired by her research into traditional English witchcraft. And I think it's very important to have things like that so that uh, you separate what is actually old and original and what is new based on it. Not that it's anything wrong with it being new, but that, that makes it so much easier to research a matter. Anyway, so, uh, let's have a look what the book contains. We have Introduction, The Man in Black, Call on to the uh, Dark Man, which is a ritual to get, to basically get into contact with the devil. But remember, this is the devil as seen by these witch cults, uh, which is not basically the scary creature that the Christians believe in. Uh, the devil here is seen as, it's, you can say it in many ways, it's a version of the horned god. And that the Wiccan idea of the horned god comes from the old English belief in a deity that I do call the devil. Um, and it's basically a ritual where you go to meet with this entity and start to form an initiation with it. Then you have Under the Horns, a rite of its initiation and dedication. It's really interesting, I would love to do this. I'm not quite sure I am brave enough to go to the local cemetery and dress completely naked though. So if I was going to get arrested for anything, that would definitely be my favorite. And then we have, uh, a Witch's Novel, which basically discusses uh, finding some sacred space and initiated it using a, a ritual tool, which is basically a iron nail. Then we have Raising the Stang, which discusses a ritual tool called the Stang, which is basically the devil's pitchfork, and how to make it and basically how to consecrate it. Then you have the Horned Castle, um, which is basically a circle casting, very interesting circle casting. Then you have the Wish uh, Hounds, the two rituals of that, which basically um, is a warding right and a right to send negativity back to the sender. You have the Lights Between, which is um, dedicational to this entity. Two rituals there. We have all is one, a rite of union, which is another devotional rite, really. Then you have skin turning in the wild hunt, which is a ritual of symbolic transformation, which is quite interesting. 
Then we have the Bucca vessel, which talks about taking a skull, and um, usually an animal skull, because they are quite easier to get than a human one, and quite usually more legal, and making it into a tool of divination. Then we have the old farmer, a read of the uh, green cap, which is basically an initiation for the coven's herbal master. Then we have some photographs, which is very interesting, of various old witchcraft tools and people performing rituals. And yeah, um, the contents of this book is fine. It's real. There's rituals are really interesting. It basically gives you the beginner rituals. And while you can do this as a solitary practitioner, it is definitely intended for coven use. So it gives you some really interesting coven rituals of traditional witchcraft based around the witch cults that inspired Wicca and other modern types of witchcraft, which is really interesting. And I would definitely like to do some of these rituals. What I don't like about this book is that it is she tries to use a lot of older words to make it sound older-ish. And I don't really approve of that because it just makes it harder to read. Having a lot of yay and writing coven instead of coven and all of these things. I'm sure that is what it originally was called. But to me, this doesn't make the book feel older. It just makes it harder to read. And I do assume that wasn't the intent. Other than that, I can't complain about much. It's a good book. I do like her book, The Black Toad, a lot better than I like this one. But this is definitely a good book. Uh, some of the rituals will have to be modified if you do not live in England, though. Because there are some uh, parts where you basically employ things in the environment that are hard to find outside of England. But other than that, I would say you could do this most places. And while it do talk about the devil, this isn't a book that talks about something horrible and scary. The devil here is the horned god. So in many ways, you could see this book as a lot of rituals to the horned god. I definitely think that a Wiccan too could have some interest in this book as a work that is dedicated to the horned god. So, yes, I really like this book. And um, that is about what I have to say about it. And that the sound, it, I think it's my phone that's making some sounds. So, yes, that is my review of The Devil's Dozen, 13 Craft Rights of the Old One by Gemma Gary. It's uh, published by Troy. Yeah, it's a good book, it's an interesting book, and it definitely gets more into the traditional witchcraft with a bit of a modern twist, which I do like. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this review. Have a great day, and blessed be.